Hello everybody, welcome to the Lawcast. My name is Melanie Thorley, I'm the Director of MJT Law. This is Christy Santana, the Associate. Good MJT day everyone. Law. Welcome back. Welcome back. Another day at the Lawcast. Another two weeks and we're back in. Yes, still the same, still the same place. I kind of feel like we've given everybody a bit of a uh, where are we right? Maybe we should do uh, where's, where's MJT yeah, today. Guess background. Guess background. <laughs> What's going on today? Mm. But we're back in the office. Um, we're all set up. We've yeah. got cameras on today. Last week yes. was probably a little bit too <laughs> dim, but that's okay. And uh, we also have a potentially new paid entitlement. Oh, on cards. <laughs> so uh, just for everyone's information. Uh, a As bill... an employer, I'm going, no. But let's yes. find out what it's all about. So, there's a bill for uh, federal parliament at the moment, um, and it's expected to pass. Uh, and it would be for every employee, so uh, everyone, uh, contractors, um, so casuals, part time, and uh, full time employees, okay. uh, to get 10 days paid uh, domestic, uh, family and domestic violence leave. Uh, and one of the interesting things about this is it would, uh, it would be not, not a cruel system. Right, so, so you get 10 no matter 10 what. 10 days so, each year. So day one you start working there, you've got 10, days. 10 days, just like that. You've got 10 days in your bank uh, and uh, I believe they want to use it as a calendar year. Now they're still, I think, so working out whether that's a calendar year or not. So five they've already got unpaid? No, this would be in replacement. Right. So in replacement of the previous five unpaid Okay, so days. now a full-time employee or part-time employee gets 20 days annual leave. 10 mm -hmm. days sick leave, mm -hmm. and now they also get 10 days domestic violence leave. Yes. So potentially an employee can be off work for 40... 40 days, eight weeks. Eight weeks. So they'll be at work for 10 time. months of the year. Yes. One of the interesting things uh, <laughs> as well, it's not pro rata. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not pro, no, not pro rata. It's not um, pro rata. So okay, so they get it. You get the so, way that the way they in broad terms they're putting it is, you will get paid what you would have been paid, but for the leave. So um, it's expected to pass. Expected to probably come into um, effect probably early, early next year. They're going to stagger it from memory. They, yes. So. so Business, small business thing, right? Yeah, so um, it's expected uh, for uh, anyone that bar small businesses uh, in early next year and for small businesses uh, late next year. So it's looking like about October next year. Um, but <laughs> this is know, inclusive everyone, of the rises else. in pay. Mm -hmm. Not that everyone feels that they're getting pay rises, but the money is still going out of the employer's pocket. Mm -hmm. And in, including the superannuation rises. Mm -hmm including the rises in actually getting supplies and stuff in the business. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, <laughs> it's the best thing that's ever happened to business. Um, I suppose <laughs> as a countering point, it should, we should mention the rationale behind it, yes. or at least the purported rationale, um, which is um, there was a committee put forward about 12 months ago, maybe 18 months ago. These are serious sites, this is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yes. uh, which came to say that the five days of unpaid uh, was not achieving the goals it was it was intended, right. which was to allow essentially domestic violence victims to uh, adequately seek refuge. So what was the problem with the five days? Was it the unpaid part or was it the five day part? Uh, it was both. Right. Um, there were situations where um, victims were yeah, the fact that they were being not paid was detrimental, a lot, especially considering a lot of them didn't have uh, access to the um, bank accounts for which they were ordinarily accessing money from. Okay, so hang on here. If there is one bank account, their pay is going into it, and they're trying to access paid domestic mm. violence leave and they can't access it, what's the point of paying them? It is a... I suppose what they're really looking to uh, the victims to do is to change their bank account. Now that's a separate issue, I think, outside of employment. But yeah, um, and and and, if, and as well, a lot of them were feeling as though uh, they needed to take annual leave, needed to take some of the other, some of them were taking personal leave apparently as well, uh, in circumstances 
in order to make up the difference while they were seeking refuge. Um, Including the five unpaid days they were already getting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, it should be said that I don't think in any way any kind of criticism of this particular legislation could be construed to be that you know, people are supporting domestic violence. I don't think in any way. But um, I'm interested to see what your kind of take on all this is because... Well, this is within the realm. This already, is within. Well, this, this is within the realm of, of employment. Yeah, uh, look, and, and um, I just see so yeah. many. There, uh, uh, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because we all complain about having a babysitting society. Mm -hmm. You know, we get. Yeah. It's really draconian. We get watched for everything. We need a certificate for everything. We just can't get on with what we're doing. And this feels like more babysitting. And I, look, I, I get that there is domestic violence out there and I am absolutely not diminishing that. I'm absolutely not diminishing that. That is an incredibly destructive thing to anybody's life and it's incredibly destructive to society and to employment. So it's, let's just set aside that issue. So we've got, we've got a society who is now saying that we're giving you five days, that didn't work, now we're giving you ten paid days, mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that's going to work, mm -hmm. but you're already getting all these other days, and, and I'm not necessarily talking about casual employees here because mm -hmm. they don't get paid for those days, or get those days. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some other issues we could solve apart from this one. If the issue is... Uh, really we're trying to target the worker who is disadvantaged because they're casuals and therefore wouldn't have these days available to them, then let's look at how we deal with casuals in the workplace. If the it's, not, it's not just, this issue does not just uh, manifest in domestic violence situations. It's this right. Is, this is a situation where particularly, you know, and we saw it in COVID. If we have a problem with people not being able to access money, while mm. they're suffering domestic violence, we have a social welfare system that could possibly actually just pay them. Yeah, and no, do I, it that way. I, I, so uh, what, agree. what they're trying, what the government is trying to do, is take the onus of the government to spend more money and therefore the budget look worse, and put that upon the employee yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. We are paying for the government's decision to fund this issue mm. well, I don't like it I don't like I don't mind the I don't mind the 10 days paid what I mm. do mind is that there are other ways we can fund this who pays that is does it? not mean the employer is disadvantaged because let, let's look on the knock-on effect I might be more inclined to employ men men have less domestic violence issues than women I might be more inclined to employ women who have no children mm. they would be more inclined just to get up and leave because they don't have this trouble of mm. having children in the household I, I'm generalizing here incredibly poorly mm. I get that don't don't send me thousands of emails but as an employer I look at this and go how do I make better choices so I am not detrimented later well I agree, I agree. I think it's it's a matter of more who pays rather than whether it happens or not. Um, one of the things I don't like about it, there's two kind of fundamental things, which, which is whoever pays should be the one who reaps the reward. And um, having seen what the committee came out with as the, the benefits to this change, I didn't necessarily see anything there that's be beneficial to an employer uh, directly other than just general being a member of society. I saw all societal benefits, great, um, but I saw nothing for the employer. Well, the trouble is employers are not there to benefit society. We live, we don't exactly. live in, that, that is not, we don't live in a society where we are, it's not Bentham, we're not a no. Benthamite society, no. we're not a communist society where we have to give all to make all mm. equal. Yeah, and when we think about we the other capitalist entitlement. society, do mm. capitalist. <laughs> when we think of the other entitlements, you can certainly see that that give and take. Like with annual leave, we know annual leave. The benefit, the, oh, the overall the overall reason we have annual leave, uh, rather than just having like a, a loading, for yeah. example, um, is to allow rest and re uh, right. rest and recovery. 
such that you get a productive employee. That's right, everyone. I turn into an absolute monster when I don't get enough leave. That's so, exactly right. Um, so I try to stop turning into a monster by taking leave. Yep. And the point is that you'll come back. Uh, and I won't be a monster. Exactly. Yes, everyone, uh, everyone will appreciate that more. Yeah. Personal leave is not that much different. No, when um, you're sick, you should stay at home, Dave. Yeah. When you've got sick kids, you're not focusing on your job anyway. Look after that. Yeah. I'm, um, not, I'm not worried about that. The problem is I don't see the same. I don't well, see the same give and take. Yeah, I, I see what I mean, you mean. Not, not that it was identified at least. No, I mean, we can. I, if we're going to take the sick person um, scenario, we can do that. We can say... Look, someone who's suffering domestic violence is not going to be focusing on their not job, blah, 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 blah. But that's not the same thing as, well, that's what sick leave is for. You know, it's not, uh, yeah. And they can, they, the, the individual, there's no they here, the individual that is suffering domestic violence should be able to access leave. I get that. Mm -hmm. Leave without pay is fine. Mm -hmm. It's not more than three no one, months. No one's so. questioning that they can take. Yeah. But it's where the money is coming from. Yeah, who pays for it? Yeah, um, dude. One of the other unique problems I find with this, and I actually thought it was a bit of a problem before. Um, I find two it, months off work, dude. Two months. I find uh, it quite concerning the position of places employers, as far as you know. We, we speak to plenty of employees, oh, and this goodness. came and this came up a lot in COVID. Yeah, uh, was for. Almost all, in fact, it might be all. There was periods of time where, where it wasn't a matter of if um, an employer could put through a COVID mandate. It was you had to, basically. Yeah. And we got quite a lot of feedback from employers, which were, "Do we have to? We don't feel particularly comfortable doing it. We, no. we don't. We don't want to do it." And a lot of them ended up doing it because they. They received adequate advice, which said that they basically had to. Yeah, that's and this is a similar kind of situation. This is, this is true, and the employers out there who really just want their employees to get on with their lives, they don't want, don't to, want, they don't to, want to delve into. They it. don't want to delve into their personal lives, but in this case, I don't believe an employer has any choice but to ask for s substantial proof that this is happening. Yeah, and what's that proof going to look like? It's just going to be really grim. And you can't unhear a lot of that stuff. It's just going to be grim, dude. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying that employers shouldn't hear the bad stuff, but they don't need to go into this. Yeah. And this poor person has to turn up to work the following week after basically airing their entire dirty laundry yeah. to somebody you hope keeps to, to themselves. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, so yeah, you, who's the real... Yeah. Two people lose out. We, that. It, the, 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 the particular manager that's involved... It's going to place them in a very difficult position. And also the person who's the, the victim in the situation. Yeah, you're right. Having to really put themselves out to in, in a situation where it should be said that there, there's plenty of relationships out there where that they don't have that. No. That, uh, That's right. That interaction such that that would be an adequate situation. No, and, and the, we, we know with the COVID issues, that one of the things that employees who were complaining about notifying their employer about whether or not they had um, uh, the vaccinations was, I don't want my employer to know. They shouldn't, they shouldn't need to find out. He gossips every time I, I yeah, say Yeah, he, so he tells everyone. He tells everyone, so, it just becomes you know, open air. And we used to get that quite a lot. So I can't imagine anybody sitting there going, you know what, let's just tell it all. Uh, <sighs> This is a social construct problem that is very difficult to solve. Mm. But now that it... It's yeah, coming in, Now that guys. it's coming in, yeah. um, I certainly can't see getting rid of. Um, I don't think no, politically... No, none of the NES entitlements have been wound back in the last, no, what, I, 19... I, well, we were talking about 2009, so... I can't see it happening. Yeah. Um, it's, it'd be almost years. political suicide um, to do so. Um, so, so on, we just need to. I'm just going to step. Mm. I'm going to step aside for a little bit. This is paid leave, right? Mm -hmm. Well, casuals don't get paid leave. Yeah, that's actually that's that's a great point. So it's a so another issue. How do we justify? What about the twenty five percent loading? What about the twenty five percent loading? What about the extra money they're receiving that they would never have received in any other setting? So in fact, they're actually getting ten How days extra pay a year. That everybody else isn't getting. Have they have they worked that out? Do we know yet? They haven't uh, yet. Not that I can see. Um, I mean, one of the interesting things we get this question a lot from from employees: should I have a casual or should I not? And they're, they're thinking about the money side of it. 
And uh, certainly there was a case, in, in fact, last week uh, in relation to a FEG matter, mm. which reconfirmed what we already knew, which was that annual leave and personal leave uh, economically does mm. uh, come out about the same as a 25% loading. It I know does. It feels very arbitrary. Yeah. It feels like just 25 cents. It seems a bit too even the number, but the numbers seem to stack yeah, up. Yeah, there is, there is a balance in the universe with this 25%. And we've, here at MJT Law, I did the figures and worked out it costs about the same. Mm. And I get more certainty with a permanent employee. Uh, I get notification they're going to be sick. I get notification for going on holidays. I get a better relationship with a permanent employee because they feel more attached to their job mm. as a permanent. So there are some knock-on effects that are non, non monetary mm. but you're right, when I do the figures, 25% is what it's worth, essentially. Mm. Mm. I suspect, um, I suspect that it'll be still fall within it and the reason being uh, of a low take up. Um, being I still that think that individual is getting 10 extra day paid days a year where somebody else would not be getting that. Oh, certainly, certainly. I don't see how that's fair on the other person. Even if they are suffering domestic violence, that permanent person is earning less. And, so, and if we're going to get on a little bit the mm. soapbox about pay parity, isn't that just creating an imbalance? 10 extra, is it, do we pay super on it? It's ordinary earnings. Mm. I, I yeah I think I think it'll I think there'll be a fairly low take up to be honest um, such that it won't make too much of a difference but it will make a lot of difference in the circumstance where it does arise I think you know if we think globally I yeah. think it depends on how many employees you have as well and True. What, you know oh, I don't know the whole thing just sounds like a management tool you're gonna have to figure it out yeah well I th it will have to you know, I think it's it's something for managers to to now have to deal with. Um, when, yes, when, when, it, it, when it comes well, when, no. when it comes into play. So. I mean, I guess they could pull it. You know, it will be fine for the organisations that have got sophisticated HR departments because oh they're used to this sort of stuff. Yeah. But for the ones which are running fairly lean on that department, um, I think a lot more on a manager's uh, table. Well, we've had a discussion now about this. It's interesting. If anybody out there has any points of view on it, if somebody has accessed domestic violence leave and feels it wasn't enough, we would be really interested in hearing mm. this. Um, as solicitors, we don't get the cases that are successful. We don't get the conversation. Mm -hmm. We don't get to hear the conversations that end well. We only get the ones that end badly. Mm. So it's we only get a very skewed vision of yeah. the community yeah very much so what else is on your desk now in in really no apparent uh segue guys <laughs> segue, um whatsoever <laughs> do, 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 do. uh we have a case uh it's not it's not crazy case mm -hmm. okay not uh, chris's but, crazy commission but it is still an interesting one yeah, um, this is a appeal of a jurisdictional objection okay um on the basis of whether an employee was dismissed or not Right, jurisdiction objections are put in place when there are some threshold questions allowing the employee to file an application to begin with. Yeah. And this one is, was the person dismissed? Yeah. And okay. broadly the test Did being... you say it's an appeal? It's an appeal of... <laughs> okay. So there's still a long way to go in this particular matter because so he wins, by the way. Right, the case has been heard. It was refused it was by refused. the sounds of it and he appealed it. Yes, he appealed and now, it. And, the, and you just told us the appeal wins. But tell us about the case. So this case involves uh, a guy who's working for a, a hotel company and he's... Uh, he has a bit of an altercation with his, his manager um, and it, just for complete context it was in relation to whether he needed to get a PCR test or not Okay. and obviously they didn't get along because <laughs> it's a it, was, it, question. It, was, it was a particularly mundane issue which blew up and the, and, uh, the manager was, his supervisor says to him get on the phone and he in an aggressive tone says delete my number hangs up Ah. Um, he Ooh. Uh, he is doesn't come to work. Uh, being a, a casual employee, he's just basically not rostered on. Uh, 
no one reaches out to this particular employee. Uh, that was his last day as far as his pay is concerned. Okay. However, about a month later, he gets a um, uh, an email saying that he can he can go to a different hotel. The hotel being about a hundred kilometers away. Um, you know, saying, hey, happy happy for you to come on board here. Let us know if you're interested, that type of thing. And he originally lost. Um, and uh, the commissioner was of the view that the phrase, uh, delete my number. Wasn't your fight. Wasn't, yeah, wasn't uh, conclusive enough t- Don't come to, back draw to the, draw the inference that the employer no longer wanted to have any type of employment relationship. Well, with I can see person. where he's going with that. I certainly can. I can sympathise with that sentiment. I can certainly see it. But the, uh, the full bench later uh, refu- kind of reversed the decision and they really drew our attention to what happened after. Okay. It was less to do with that statement as it was the fact that they... They never lost the mind, didn't pay him. Didn't yeah. pay him. There was no From more intent, contact. They just... Dis- ghosted him. Ghosted him, essentially. Yeah. Um, and I could certainly see where he's coming from. So, hang I on. I certainly see... When did he file the unfair dismissal? Because we've got a 21-day time frame, still, too. He still got it on time. Okay. He's still got, got it on time. Um, Clever chap. And uh, interestingly, the commissioners also draw the attention to one of the obvious problems is um, if they're saying he's not dismissed and it's now been, and I apologize, I don't have the dates, it might have been a couple of months by then, is uh, doesn't that draw the... What, yeah. What about the money? Yeah. <laughs> what about... Uh, the owed wages that yep. should What about happen. me? It isn't what, fair. What about him if he was to just rock up to it's work It's my time tomorrow? and I want my share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. If he's not dismissed, he's still employed. Yeah. So go back to work. And the fact that they didn't challenge that mm. and and send him any type of disciplinary action for not rocking up to work. So was he rostered on though? He was. Uh, but they didn't really care that he didn't turn didn't up. They didn't care that he didn't turn up. Um, and... Yeah, he uh, he won the case and won well, the back. appeal. Yeah, now, it, now it's back to a consideration, back to square one. So how appeals work, people in the commission, um, at, at least, is when the appeal is successful, the n- not the original the original person has to redo it, or the not original person. Um, it won't be the original. So person. another commissioner needs to go back and hear the whole thing again, mm-hmm. as if. It was all fresh. It's not always what appeals are about, but in this particular circumstance mm-hmm. it is. So this chap gets to agitate his claim again, which is really interesting because just going along mm. small tangent because I know the time is getting low, is they can all do it so much better the second time round. Yes. They get another shot. Yes, they can. They can, they can. So what do you think? Terminated, not terminated? I think terminated. Terminated, bro? I think terminated. Why not? Um, I believe it. The fact, and and I agree with their reasoning and uh, with this uh, yeah. secondary thing, and it should be said, in, in fairness to the original commissioner, uh, they did uh, note that none of the witnesses were cross-examined. The evidence that was presented was like wholly deficient. So basically, the case that was originally presented was was crap. Crap. Yeah. Um, so of course, he made the Look, wrong decision. I don't think the language was enough. Delete my phone, especially no. if you're in the heat of the moment. Uh, you know. It sounds like this is a sort of environment where people are getting, having, you know, throwing language mm. around anyway. Everyone's kind of used to it. I don't think that's enough. But never rostering, rostering him on mm. and him not showing up and not really wondering where the hell he is. Not, not making any more contact. Would imply to at least the employee that they didn't care about whether he was there or yeah. not. Therefore, yeah. I, I find this a fundamental problem with casual employment, though. Mm. This concept where you can kind of stop rostering on, but it's, is or isn't mm. termination this is a this is a problem that pops up regularly far more regularly than people probably realize uh and you know as, as a kind of just base load piece of advice is to all of our employer clients out there is to make a definitive end yeah you know whether 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 we think it's a it's, end it's or lawful not or end. not yeah the at very least, here is your letter. termination letter. Yeah, even if it doesn't have the reason. Your for last it. day is X, or you will why be- didn't you turn up to work? Get your butt ski in yeah. there, dude. Yeah, I think uh, making decisions. Because- 
a decision on that day. No. I don't think. I don't they just let, they just waited for him to not show up. Just and no go, decision? And just went, you know what? He didn't show up. I'm all good with that. Yeah. Maybe they could argue that he resigned by failing to turn up to his... I suspect... His abandonment of employment. It's a better argument. Although, I mean, both were, I believe, self-represented, so you know, maybe they didn't identify that. But I think that that would have been a better oh, it's a good argument, argument rather than... Yeah, abandonment of employment. You didn't show up, dude. Hmm. There is that concept of need to take reasonable steps to see if and, the person's still alive, but... And not, not contacting him and actually telling him not to contact you. Yeah, the whole thing's a bit problematic. Um, but that all said... I mean, that only gets him in the door. That's right. It doesn't even get the unfair dismissal over the line. Well, that's still to yeah. be determined. Yeah, tricky. Well, that's everything I wanted to talk about. I've got about. nothing to say, people. So I think I've been offensive enough today. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, so well, it's important to have... Uh, Commerce, you know, productive conversations around it is, these and it's, issues. It's you know. worth having a um, an alternative view that's m maybe not necessarily the politically correct view as well, just to throw some things out there. Next fortnight mm -hmm. um, is the week before I go on holiday. Yes, yes. So I am taking annual leave. There you go. Rest and relaxation. Rest just as and we, relaxation. <laughs> that we were mentioning before. That's right. Just, just, just. Okay, people, thank you for watching the Lawcast. Um, loved to see you again. Please keep watching and like, 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 like. Yes. I've been told to do that by my social media <laughs> people. Like, 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 yeah, like. Yeah, and then like. we put like the graphic. Yeah. You see, boop, boop, yeah. Boop. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've actually never seen that filmed before. <laughs> but it's a lot weirder when you see it without the, uh, the, uh, without the graphics. Anyway. Anyhow, thank, All right, thank see you everyone. for watching. See you next week. <laughs> Bye.